Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from University of Delhi and in this session we are going to discuss digestion of food and as you know digestion begins in the mouth and mouth is well prepared for doing this digestion. When I say mouth I really mean buccal cavity or oral cavity. In addition to roll of teeth and roll of tongue here I will discuss role of salivary glands and the salivary gland secretions and the enzyme. Salivary glands they secrete saliva. We all are familiar with saliva in our mouth. This saliva has many roles to play. It will moisten the food, it will lubricate the food and now this food which has become a ball lubricated ball kind of thing is called bolus. So what is bolus? The food which you have put in your mouth and which is nicely mixed with saliva, nicely moistened and lubricated by saliva and has taken a shape of a small bowl. So it is called bolus. Now this bolus is ready to slip down to esophagus but before saliva is going to act on this food. Saliva will have the enzyme called salivary amylase also known as tylin. It will act on starch and convert it into carbohydrate. In addition, saliva also has many ions like potassium ions, chloride ions, uh, bicarbonate ions and sodium ions. These are electrolytes. We require them in our body. So our saliva when it is mixing with our food is also providing us with these electrolytes. You have studied about membrane transport. Every cell has a membrane and this membrane is called a living membrane because it allows passage of electrolytes through it and also we are familiar with the fact that when three sodiums go from inside to outside then two potassium come from outside to inside and that is how the membrane of the cell will work. So electrolyte exchange is important for proper functioning of cell membrane and when cell membrane functions properly then only cell will function properly and we are aware of the fact the cell is a basic functional unit of our body. So these electrolytes, these ions are important. Of course, we get them through food, through many other things, but we are also getting it through our own saliva. So these electrolytes are important. So first thing, saliva has salivary amylase, which works as enzyme. It has electrolytes, which it is giving to our food, bolus. Third, saliva also has lysoenzyme, which will kill the bacteria if any in your food. The food which we eat of course we take utmost care that it is not infected, it is not stale, it is not exposed to unwanted atmosphere but still there may be some infection. That is killed by this saliva because it has lysoenzyme. This is time for you children again to appreciate your body, your mouth having saliva and saliva disinfecting the food which you are eating. So when you eat the first part of elementary canal is your mouth and disinfection is taking place right at that point because once you have swallowed the food whatever it is it will reach the elementary canal. Rest of the elementary canal has some more arrangement to disinfect it. One more point which I would like to give here is that the enzyme in saliva, the salivary amylase acts at the pH 6.8. That is almost a neutral pH. Try to understand the value of pH in terms of enzyme action. If I am coupling pH with enzyme action, 
then I am directly passing on the point to you that enzyme can work only at a particular pH, neither at less nor at more pH. If pH is too much altered, then enzyme may be deactivated, inactivated. So, for enzyme action to be performed properly, pH becomes very important and hence our buccal cavity provides this particular pH for enzyme to act on the food. When we go forward, you will know the value of pH in different parts of our elementary canal. So, this is about salivary glands, saliva, salivary enzymes and related details. Moving to buccal cavity, this particular slide shows you inside of the buccal cavity. By now, you have very clear idea about uh, teeth, about tongue, about uh, taste uh, receptors and also salivary amylase and saliva. At this point, through this diagram, what I want to emphasize here is that we have esophagus through which food is passing and parallel to esophagus we have trachea through which air is passing. Nose is continued as trachea and mouth is continued as esophagus and both are moving parallel to each other. They reach inside of buccal cavity at one point at pharynx together. Pharynx is the area or the part in the buccal cavity which is common for both the passages. Food will also pass through it, air will also pass through it. Now when you swallow the food, at that time epiglottis will close the glottis so that food does not go in the respiratory tract and that is why it is said that when you are eating, do not speak. When you swallow, at that time it should not go to respiratory channel. We have mechanism, epiglottis closing the glottis, but if you speak, the epiglottis will open up and particle of food will enter the respiratory tract for a while and then you will start coughing and then it will come out. So that coughing reflex is also very natural to throw that food particle from respiratory tract. So try to see children. What a wonderful arrangement we have for each and every detail in our body. Food should not go into the air channel and air should not go into the food channel. For that we have a door which will close the passage as required. But if we do not follow the rules, we are speaking too much while eating, then food may go in respiratory pipe. So arrangement is there and after that is the esophagus which is muscular and it has very good peristalsis, it has no enzyme, it has no digestive activity, no digestion will take place in esophagus, it is only a passage. It will pass food from mouth to stomach, that is one thing. Second thing, at the level of pharynx and glottis, the swallowing reflex works. I have told you earlier also that we have three important reflexes in our body. One is swallowing reflex, other is defecation reflex and other is micturition reflex. We have studied micturition reflex in case of kidney. Defecation reflex is giving out feces and swallowing reflex is swallowing food from mouth towards esophagus. This reflex is also very complicated. It has neural mechanism. It is muscular and nervous mechanism together which will allow you to swallow. Suppose your swallowing reflex is disturbed due to some or the other reason. Imagine what will happen. You are masticating food, food is in your mouth, bolus is formed, you are not able to take it in. You are not able to swallow it. It is not going to esophagus. What do you do? How long will you keep food in your mouth? So, swallowing reflex is very important, but sometimes those who drink alcohol or eat tobacco, their swallowing reflex is affected because alcohol is absorbed in the mouth 
in the esophagus region more and after it reaches the stomach only little bit is absorbed because absorption is more in these areas that is why injury and damage is more in these muscular areas these are soft muscle tissues and if they are affected due to any unwanted reason then they will not work and if they don't work you cannot swallow so reflex any reflex which is natural between muscle and nerves you cannot afford to disturb it so swallowing which is also known as deglutition is important for you that will allow you to carry your food from mouth to esophagus to stomach coming to esophagus esophagus is a tube between mouth and stomach through this food will reach stomach you are already aware that there is sphincter we call esophageal cardiac sphincter which allows movement of food from esophagus to stomach and not in the opposite direction but sometimes due to our carelessness you must have experienced acidic food is slightly coming to esophagus this is called reflux of acid that means the food after mixing with acid in the stomach is coming back to esophagus for a time being and this is not good indication because wall of stomach is equipped to live in acidic condition not the wall of esophagus and if there is a reflux the acid will touch esophageal lining from inside and that may result into ulcers going forward now we have reached up to stomach you had taken food in your mouth saliva acted it became bolus you swallowed it it came to esophagus and due to peristalsis it has reached stomach now stomach is a big muscular strong bag the churning of food will take place here very big churning movements are there which will grind the food into small small and even smaller pieces so that it can be acted upon by enzymes properly in the stomach in the stomach if you see the section of its stomach in the interior wall of the stomach there are mucus neck cells which will secrete mucus the value of mucus is that it will cover the internal wall of stomach with mucus so that the wall itself should not be acted upon by enzymes and the hcl produced by stomach hcl produced in stomach will further disinfect the food and will make the medium very acidic the ph will be around 1.8 because the enzymes of stomach can act only on this ph again it is time to appreciate the value of ph in digestive system in the stomach you have peptic cells also known as chief cells these cells secrete the enzyme called proenzyme proenzyme means some enzyme before enzyme the enzyme which is finally produced a stage before that is proenzyme and pepsinogen these enzymes have a special role to play we will discuss in the next episode but before that there are parietal cells also known as auxentic cells which secrete hcl the hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factors and factors which are called intrinsic factors are very essential for absorption of vitamin b12 we all know the importance of vitamin b12 in our body this particular section shows you the internal lining of stomach which is not very much folded but it has glands secreting enzymes and hcl and it has mucus covering the wall of the stomach from inside and the value of this we already know and with this we come to the end of this session thank you Thank you.